Rejoined by Brian Keel. Had a uh, riveting discussion during the break as well. We continue that. Uh, send in your questions for Brian using the hashtag BYUSN. Let's, let's get to one of those fan questions. At Ross JC4. Ross Apo. That's not Ross Apo. <laughs> Have you had a chance to check out a group of linebackers? If so, how do you think they'll do this year? I have checked them out, and i just so impressed with them. Just, uh, I think they're going to be fantastic. They're athletic, they're fast, they're big, they're strong. What I, what I want to see is the next step from last year. Last, last year they had those traits, but they didn't quite really capitalize on it. Um, what I want to see is them to take that athleticism and that potential and to just unleash it on the field. And I think they could be fantastic if they do that. Yeah, it, it, I think the next level is 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 mentally, man. Yeah, is, is learning is really learning the game. You know, the X's and and the O's. And I was speaking with a few uh, younger DBs um, earlier uh, a couple weeks ago, and just asking them, you know, what are some of the the challenges, struggles that you guys face, and they said the same thing. Yeah, you know, it, it was, it, you know, it's just trying to fully understand the the, the game yeah. the, at, at that level, especially. You know how it is in high school, man. You the best athlete. <laughs> you just out you there just, playing, just dude. Playing. Hey, go guard him right yeah. here. He has a scholarship to uh, Ohio State. If you guard him, you'll get a scholarship to okay. BYU. Okay, go ahead. So you know, really trying to understand yeah. the game. I think that's the that's the case with with a lot of these guys being young. The sentiment with the BYU defense is last year they put out some of the best athletes that weren't necessarily tied into the scheme and the mental part of it. Yeah. yeah. This year. Uh, the, the sentiment is, we're going to play the guys that run the defense better. Yeah. What is best for BYU in the long term? Because in the moment, athleticism takes over, hopefully, but you got to be in position to make the great, play. Yeah, that's a great question. What do you think, Brian? You want both, and ideally you'll have both, and if we do things the right way, we'll get both. But in the, in the interim, if you have a 4-3 guy that isn't looking at the right keys, you're going to get burned, okay? If you have a 4-5 guy who is looking at the right keys and, and studies and, and does things the right way, he's going to be in the right position. He's going to make the play. Yeah. And so the, the brain trumps ability every time. I mean, look at the Patriots. They are full of underachievers, less athletic, you know, effort, smart, savvy football players. They're full, their roster is full of them, of guys who, who didn't blow up the combine mm -hmm. but are football players. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, it's a little different, but the, the the principle is the same. You know, they're full of football players who stu they study. You know, they said the guys that I've talked to have been to New England. I mean, they 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 put the time that, in. That's a perfect example. I, I have a friend that played. Uh, I played high school football with Sterling Moore. Uh, played at SMU. Uh, free agent rookie signed with with uh, the Patriots and started in the Super Bowl. Wow. Started every towards the towards the end of the season. Started every every game, every playoff game. Started in the Super Bowl. At corner, yeah. Who 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 does that in the NFL? Who allows yeah. that in the yeah. NFL, right? And who hey, is Malcolm Brown yeah. in that interception on the last play? Like, yeah. who's that guy? Yeah, right, right. From nowhere, right. And, and it's I, the same and story. Coach Mendenhall, his I believe his philosophy is the same. And and he, one thing like like B said, uh, it, it's one thing to have the the mental aspect, but Coach Mendenhall takes it to the next level, which is. Can now now can you play with each other? Yeah. I want not only do you do I have to do you have to understand your assignments and know what's going on in the field, but can you get along with the guy to the right, to the left, yeah. the, the other ten guys around you? How well do you mold with that? Which which I think is what separates Coach Mendenhall and mm -hmm. it has allowed him to be successful with two star guys, you know, one star guys like myself. Well, and here's the thing, and there's power to what B just said because. When you have an assignment, and it's one thing to just know your assignment, and it's, it's good, that's important, it's essential. You need to know your assignment. But it's another thing to know the collective philosophy of the defense. Because when you understand what the philosophy of the defense is, it makes sense to you of why, oh, why I got to carry this guy to mm -hmm. 15 right. and not 10. Why I got to carry this guy to 15 and not 10. And, and going back to what B said, when you have that camaraderie, when you have that brotherhood that we strive for, on BYU's football team, you want to carry that guy to 15 because oh, yeah. you don't want to hang your buddy out to dry. Nope. You mm -hmm. don't want to. And just my experience in the NFL, the teams that aren't very good are the teams that are full of guys who are just looking out for number one. Yep. They don't care. I'm just going to get mine. I don't care. I don't care about the scheme of the defense. I don't care about you – know, I'm just going to get mine. Mm -hmm. The teams – because here's the thing. Across the board in the NFL, the talent is not that different. 
the difference is the schemes, the coaches, and the camaraderie. The guys working together and yeah. playing together and caring about the guy next to them. And so, so that's the thing. When you have that, when you combine all of that together, that's where greatness happens. Here's a, here's a perfect example. I always remember this because we got our butts handed to us. Florida State, Ooh. 2009. Ooh. Uh, we were ranked Ooh. number seven. I, and I always <laughs> say this, Big B, because Jerem and the guys, they always give me so much mess about it. We were, we, that was the year. We were going out <laughs> Oklahoma. Oh. We were in the streets. We shut down a whole street for you guys. Oh, and then man. you came home and you lost Florida State. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> those guys, freakishly athletic. Yeah. And, and re every single receiver, I think, ended up going to – uh, somewhere in the NFL, literally ran four threes. It's my yeah. first taste of a real four three. <laughs> and I remember Andrew Rich, uh, first quarter, came to me and said, "I need you to back up and yeah. not bite on on the short stuff because I am getting toasted right now. I need some <laughs> I need some help." And 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 at first I was like, "Heck no, man! I'm about to I'm about to, I want to get my tackles. You yeah. know, I don't want to look like a like a bum because if this guy catches the ball at five yards." He makes one move, it's it's over for yeah, me. Yeah. But I said, you know what? That's that's my boy, that's my dog. I'm gonna go ahead and take some some steps back. And 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 like like Big B said, it's that that love that you have for, yeah. for your brother, the, your player, of why you're willing to do that and, and, and sacrifice. I get a sense from last year's team that there were maybe issues with what you guys are talking about to some degree. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. When yeah. you lose, it doesn't mean that those issues exist strongly, but but maybe. Right. Yeah. So so this year, if BYU is playing the guys that are more like this, the hope is that the defense is better. The hope is that they're accountable to Bronco Mendenhall. Do you see that happening this year more? I do. I mean, I, I expect it. I expect there to be a rise of performance, production, accountability just across the board. But it's it's just getting back to the, the thing. It's Bronco always says it, it's it's getting everybody, getting the right people on the bus, and getting them in the right seats. He, yep. he said that a lot. And, and and so that's the thing. You you sometimes, you know, you got guys who don't belong on the bus. Yeah. And so it's just getting the right guys on there, getting them in the right position. Uh, like, you know, talking about being in the right seat. Uh, uh, Bronson, was he out of right. position last year? Yeah. Probably, you know, yeah. probably. Um, I think they kind of learned from that. And I, I think, well, I don't know, but I think what we'll see this year is a better utilization of his abilities, what, his skill set and what he brings to the table. M remember, remember Spencer Hadley played Buck um, for the first four, four games, I think. Mm -hmm. And then um, something happened where they, they tried to make some more room. Or I think Alani uh, came on They strong. wanted to get Alani on yeah, the field. Yeah, they wanted to get Alani on the field. So yeah. what they do, they, they, they bumped up to the outside just yeah. to make some, some space. So Coach Mendenhall does a, a great Opposite job of that. Van Noy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, 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 I think the issue last year was, was really – uh, the injuries and then the depth, right? Yeah. And, and, and it was and, a lot of things. And not, yeah, and, uh, right. It, it really was. But not having that, having those injuries, one, but then the, the inexperience yeah. after that. So you, have, you, you really have nowhere else to go. I don't care if the guys don't get along. I got no choice, man. Yeah. I got to play. I got to put you out there. I got to play. If that's kind of where we got down to at that, the end there. That's, that's, yeah, really. Because people complain. I mean, I talked to all sorts of people that complain about the coaches. You know, they want to put it all on the coaches. It's all the coaches' fault, and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you talk about, well, these kids – you know, they make mistakes, they make critical errors, and then, well, that comes back to the coaches. Why are they playing them? They got nobody else yeah, to put in. Got no option, man. You know, if you've, I don't know what the number is, but when you have that many injuries, you, you kind of get to a point where it's like, okay, you know, you're going to be playing. So, yeah. you know, and it just goes back to the old thing. It's corny and it's cliche, but it's true. You can take a horse of water, but you can't make them drink. You know, the coaches can preach till they're deaf, they're, you know, to their horse, I mean. They can preach till they can't speak anymore. But it doesn't matter if these kids aren't going to listen right. and if they're not going to heed what the coaches are telling them. Whether you like Nick Howell or not, he was put in maybe the worst possible situation a as a defensive coordinator yeah. because the leader of the defense was somehow Taysom Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he got hurt. True. And uh, you had a ton of injuries. So it's a de facto all, all leader. of a sudden it's all his fault. Like yeah. I'm not saying whether it is or isn't, but – That'd be a tough situation to be in. No, he has plenty of blame. It's just he got more than he deserved. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and hey, not as much help from the best mind. You know, uh, all that stuff. That's another discussion. I teased it, so I have to ask. Who are, who are some guys that you're looking at that maybe didn't play a ton last year that you think will have an impact this year on the BYU fo football team? Maybe, maybe the defense. Ooh. Um... I... Two guys... Well, I, one guy. I mean, I've said it before. He's, he's kind of my my guy right now everybody has their guy 
there, dude. You know, um, Warner. I just – he's – Yeah. Federico. He's my guy. And, you know, he played a little bit, um, kind of got – you know, got his feet wet yeah. and as a true freshman. But that's that's the guy. I mean, I said it last week. That's my guy. I, I'm excited for him. He, he fits the mold. He fits the pattern that we've had in years past. And I think I just am excited. I'm excited for big things from him. You got a guy on offense that you think will make um, a big impact? Ooh. Um, he's not, I mean, he's not a, a, a dark horse or anything or anybody, but just coming back off injury is Jamal. Um, and and he tweeted an Instagram video today where that knee looked really good. Oh, or did he? Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have I, to look at it. I know it's it. just one little play in the IPF. I'll have to look at it. It looked good. Planet, hey, he, came down he planted home. really he? hard and cut left for a little while. Yep. I said it, I've said it many times. He's my favorite player on the team. Oh, yeah. And he's swag. Yeah, I talked about I, was, I, I spoke at a, I spoke at something I can't remember what it was and he was there and and I said I'm jealous of him because I always wanted to be a BYU running back. Uh, From the time I was little, you know, I always wanted to be a running back and I was like he's living my dream right now. <laughs> to be a BYU running back. Um, but yeah, he's my favorite player on the team because of the way he plays the game. Yeah. He's not the biggest guy. I mean, he th- he he plays like he's 250. Yeah. He's not 250, and I love it. I just I love I love his his passion, his his fiery attitude, his it just I love the way that the play is not over until two seconds after the whistle blows. Yeah. And and if we if we had a dozen of guys with oh, that right. kind of heart, and obviously he has tremendous athletic ability, which is why he's such a good player. But I just I love the way he goes about the game, and it's just you know it just. The, the, those those characteristics and those that mindset, just that com- competitive nature, that just I'm not a scared scared of anybody, not afraid of anybody. I'm not backing down. And if we had a dozen guys like that, man, we'd be scary. The youngest senior in BYU history, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and, I'll, and I'll never forget. Just Boise started St- shaving. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> Boise State, BYU is getting worked into the second quarter. I think I think BYU didn't get a first down in the first quarter, or something. Yeah. And he had this 12 yard run and just. Finally, someone did something, and he's just trying to single-handedly put everyone in yeah. back. Yeah. That kind of energy is awesome. Thanks for the time. Great stuff as always, Brian. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Phyllis. Fast Friday with Brian Keel. Coming up, Ryan Wade joins us to unveil the BYU men's and women's cross-country schedules and look ahead to this season. That's next on BYU Sports Nation.